I have a lot of testosterone. I've been trying this whole year trying to get it up. Will I be successful or I'm destined for TRT? We are in Helsinki, the capital of Finland, aka the happiest country in the world. But don't be fooled, it's not always this bright. The winter is long, it's dark, it never ends. And sunlight? Good luck with that. Was that the reason why I don't have a high testosterone because of the lack of vitamin D? Let's actually find out. Just for some context, I've never done blood tests in my 20s. I was just too broke for that. So I don't have actually a good point of reference to start from and to compare now I'm on my 32. So if you actually have the funds, please do your blood tests. It's your future self is gonna thank you after. Testosterone is your primary sex hormone. It's releasing big amount during puberty and it's peaking around 18 before it starts going down. Hence why we all experience that massive sex drive during our teenage day. I don't want to even remember that. It's the one hormone that defines you as a man. It's responsible for your bone health, muscle mass, the regulation of your libido. So if you have low testosterone, you're gonna feel it and you're not gonna be happy in your life. You're gonna feel depressed, things are not going well. So yeah, you want to check yourself and be careful about that. Some of the symptoms of a low testosterone is the reduced muscle mass, erectile dysfunction, increased fatigue. You're gonna feel it. You're gonna feel something is wrong. So you want to go and get tested if you get any of that. An average man's testosterone is between 300 and 1100 nanogram per deciliter. Being higher or lower is not uncommon, but too much testosterone actually is not great. You will have a lot of symptoms that actually goes against that, which is sometimes even getting man boobs. Yeah, that's actually true. Too much testosterone can turn you into a woman. And of course, if a woman is taking testosterone, she became a man. Fascinating, right? I was surprised when I first got my blood test. Yes, I don't have a deep voice like Morgan Freeman, but I am decently muscular. I have high sex drive and my hair actually grows really fast, which means I don't have any symptoms of a low testosterone person. But 317 nanogram per deciliter, that's actually really low. I can go to a doctor right now and get prescribed TRT, which is ironic because this whole YouTube channel is built upon talking about the steroids and the side effects of those and how you should avoid them. But now I am in a position where I need to do that, which is insane. I really don't want to. I start doing my research on what could have caused my low T. And first of all, I'm living in Finland here. There's rarely any sun, so, but something that and I cannot change. I need to move out of the country or go south. So I try to do my second best thing, which take in vitamin D pills consistently. Finger crossed if it's gonna help. The second reason that could have contributed to my low testosterone is stress levels. I work in a competitive field and it's actually hard. It's stressful and just you cannot change that. But luckily, since last year, I don't need to do any more teaching duties. I've been teaching master's students for the last four to five years, but now I don't need to do that. That's a little bit lower in my stress levels. So uh, yeah, this is actually the best conditions for me to rebound and get it better. All right, the third reason is actually sleep. And to be honest, I've been sleeping about seven hours. Fortunately, I can't change that because just stress levels and work. But this year I try to do better. I've been sleeping about eight hours, eight hours and a half, which is actually on the good side. Fingers crossed if this is actually gonna help my testosterone levels. Maybe I'm overthinking it, but I have low body fat percentage, about 10 to 12%. That could have contributed to my plummeting testosterone. So uh, I decided to bulk and I was thinking about bulking anyway. So this year, I am bulking. Now for supplementation, I don't take any kind of testosterone boosters. And the reason is simple. I don't want to actually add anything that's gonna interfere with my um, lifestyle. Now, if I took any of testosterone booster and somehow my testosterone got better, I would even know if it's actually the supplement I'm taking right now or uh, what I've been trying to change in my lifestyle. So no testosterone boosters for me. The only supplements I'm taking is whey protein and creatine, nothing else. Of course, I hope this is gonna help because otherwise, from there, where am I gonna go? The RT, that's out of my question, so. For the other factors, I am as good as you can get. I don't smoke, I don't drink, I eat nutritious, healthy food, I exercise, I don't take any drugs or medication, and my HDL and LDL are perfect. I am also don't have any diabetes, even though type one diabetes would have been great, you know, anabolic insulin. <laughs> 
Just to give you guys some context where I'm standing right now, Neon, who allegedly can't unrack a 45 pounds bar, has about 118 nanogram per deciliter. You're pretty low, you're at 118. That's, you wanna be about 500. So you're, you're pretty low. That is shockingly low. I don't know how he can function in his everyday life as a man. Of course, assuming that's really his testosterone levels and it's not all staged. More examples from other influencers. Greg Doucette, who got 592 nanogram per deciliter. But remember, he's on TRT because his natural production shut down all the way to 49 nanogram per deciliter. I call this the bodybuilding tax. You just cannot escape if you want to be a pro. Even though sometimes you can't make it all the way to the pro level, but you can still rack up massive success. This is another proof that you don't need to pump exogenous testosterone just to be successful. And of course, not everyone meant to be a bodybuilder. It's also ironic because most bodybuilders are broke, they can barely afford the gear and the food. But now we got a successful science-based bodybuilder who's willing to go through plastic surgeries to improve his aesthetics. This is definitely a wild experiment, I didn't thought I'm gonna see it in my lifetime. Even though I'm not a fan of this idea of relying on plastic surgeries to get your perfect body, but he's an adult and all I can do is wish him a good luck. Other examples from influencers like Jeff Nippard who got 470 nanogram per deciliter, that's a decent level, good for someone who's 34. It would have been really interesting to compare his current testosterone results from his levels on his 20s. Other controversial influencers are Hussein at 689 nanogram per deciliter and Julian at 672 nanogram per deciliter. Surprisingly close, both are genetic freaks. Actually, Julian has Mr. Olympia type of ceiling, an absolute monster, regardless of his natural status. And he wants to be a classic physique champion, so eventually, sooner or later, he's gonna admit publicly taking exogenous testosterone. And whenever that happens, his whole story of being natural or not will just go away. So no more myostatin deficiency theories. And for Hussein who got and still getting a lot of hate about his natural status, especially after that publicity stunt that didn't age well with Greg Doucette. I don't know if he's natural or not, he looks enhanced to me and that's a compliment for any natural lifter. If you are getting steroids accusation and you know deep inside you that you're natural, you are doing something right. Alex Eubank is pushing the natural limit at 932 nanogram per deciliter. It still surprises me someone this young already on TRT. But I get it, if you're an adult, fitness is your main job, your bread and butter, and you understand the risk of being fully reliant on a jab twice a week forever, then of course I can't judge that. So this is the comparison chart. The way it's folding right now, I'll be testosterone deficient by 40? Obviously I don't want that. I will do whatever it takes from me to bring up my testosterone levels naturally. TRT will be my last resort and only if I need it. Of course, it's not gonna be for aesthetics. We are in the future here, I've got my testosterone levels with me here. To be honest, I am shocked, I didn't expect results like this. My testosterone levels went from 317 nanogram per deciliter to 808 nanogram per deciliter. That's two and a half times more. Keep in mind, I've taken my test at noon. Usually you're advised to get your blood test first in the morning when your testosterone at its highest. So it could have been even more than 808 nanogram per deciliter. Keep in mind, I am 32 years old. That puts me at the top 1% of the population. And this is not only great news for me, but also for you as a natural lifter, you do have the capacity to optimize your testosterone levels without relying on any chemicals, test boosters, or exogenous tea. Let's just recap what I've changed this year that got my testosterone from 317 to 808. The first probable cause is the lack of sun. I've been taking vitamin D supplementation during the darkest time, that means winter and spring. More sleeping time. I've taken my sleep from 7 hours to 8.5 hours. I am bulking right now. My body fat went from around 12% to around 19%. Finally, I've been managing my stress levels even better this year and found ways to relax. And that's all what I've changed. Keep in mind, I've already had great habits. Obviously, you wouldn't be able to build a physique like this naturally without being disciplined. And I've been refining my healthy lifestyle for the last 12 years. Some of you guys wouldn't be having the same starting point as me. Again, if you're young and you can afford it, please get your blood tests. 
And if you're on your 30s, you want to monitor your testosterone levels. The worst kept secret in the world, there is a testosterone crisis. And this is not only in first world countries, it's everywhere in the world. Testosterone is dropping drastically everywhere. There's a lot of theories why this is happening right now, but the one thing we are sure of, men are less happy in their 40s and 50s. It doesn't matter how rich you are, having a functional, strong and healthy body is something you need to work hard for. It's the one ground we are all equal on, so you don't want to lose that battle. If you enjoyed this video and you find it informative, make sure to subscribe to the channel. Also, I read the comments, so don't hesitate to ask any questions. Thank you for your support. I will see you next time.